The neurology physical exam will likely be the most important skill you learn during your neurology rotation. There are many tools that you need to have with you and tests to remember. Unlike in other rotations, you'll be expected to actually perform most, if not all, of the neurology exam on every patient that you meet. In this video, we will give an overview of what equipment you should have with you and how to approach the neuro exam so that you don't miss anything. We will not cover the details or interpretation of each exam maneuver here, which will be covered in upcoming videos. So let's focus on what equipment first. There are seven items that you should have on you at all times. First, you should have a checklist of mental status exam questions with you. You can either make your own list that you refer to when you need it or buy a small pocket reference guide that contains this list in it. In addition, most neurology departments have their own mental status exam worksheets that can be filled out for each patient. You may want to print this out and carry it with you as well, even though you will probably not end up evaluating a full mental status exam on each patient, you'll do it enough times that you need to make sure that you have a copy of this worksheet on hand at all times. Second, you need to have a pen light to assess the pupils. Third, you need to have a visual chart to assess visual acuity. Fourth, you need to have a tuning fork. This is very useful for multiple tests. For example, you can use it to assess hearing, vibration sense, and even temperature sense since the tuning fork is pretty much always cold. Fifth, you need a reflex hammer to test reflexes. Sixth, you should have a few cotton swabs with you at all times. These are extremely useful for the sensory exam. Use the cotton side to test soft touch, then break off the opposite side to create a point you can use to assess pinprick. The seventh and final item you should have is a stethoscope. Even though it's not used specifically in the neurology part of the physical exam, you are generally expected to have it with you. It also doubles as a decent reflex hammer if you're really desperate and forgot where you put your reflex hammer. All right, now that you have all the materials you need for the neurology exam, let's figure out a way to approach the exam so that you don't forget anything. There are lots of tests to remember, so it's important to break the exam into smaller, more manageable chunks. I like to break the exam into six major pieces. Mental status, cranial nerves, motor exam, reflex exam, sensory exam, and lastly, the gait or coordination exam. You can remember these pieces using a mnemonic and think of your rapping old lady neighbor, MC Mrs. G. The other trick that has been very helpful for me is to follow a general top to bottom approach for the neurology exam. This way, I don't have to keep moving the patient and also avoid having awkward transitions. So now imagine that your attending has just asked you to perform a neurological exam on a patient and let's use these tricks to devise a general strategy to approach this exam. In upcoming videos, I'll give more detailed tips on how to organize and perform each individual piece. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is ask the patient to sit down in front of you. Remember your friend MC Mrs. G? Let's start with the first M, which is for the mental status exam. Use your mental status exam checklist that you have with you to assess her mental status. You may not need to ask every question for every patient, but the attending will want to know that this is something you have considered. Next, with the patient still sitting, move on to C, which stands for cranial nerves. Perform the entire cranial nerve exam with a patient sitting in front of you. Notice that the cranial nerve exam is above the neck, so doing this part first fits in with our top-down approach. Now that you are done with the M and the C part, you're ready for the motor, reflex, and sensory or MRS part of the exam. Each of these pieces cover the same areas of the body, so it's easiest to do them together, working top down. For example, start with the left and right arms together and assess the motor function, reflexes, and sensation for both of these extremities at the same time. As much as possible, compare one arm to the other arm as you're going through these exams, as relative differences between extremities tells you a lot of information. And the strength exam, aka the motor exam, should be tested in both arms simultaneously. After you're done with the upper extremities, you can move on to the lower extremities, or your right and left leg, and do the same thing that you did for the upper extremities. At this point, notice that you are done with the mental status, cranial nerve, motor, reflex, and sensory parts of the neuro exam, and the only one you have left is the gait and coordination exam, which we'll talk about next. Since the coordination test, such as the finger to nose test or the finger tapping test, can be done with the patient still sitting in front of you, do these first. Then, finally, have the patient stand up. 
intercessor gait. With that, you have covered all six major pieces of the neurological exam. And then finally, we have our take home points for this video. Number one, you should have seven things with you for the neurology physical exam, the mental status exam checklist, a pen light, a vision chart, a tuning fork, a reflex hammer, a cotton swab, and a stethoscope. Number two, break the exam into smaller, more manageable pieces using the mnemonic MC Mrs. G. And what those individual letters stands for is listed here for your reference. And lastly, as much as possible, work top to bottom and limit having the patient change positions too much throughout the exam. Thanks for watching.